So let's keep it natural. There's no camera, right? We just having a conversation. conversation. Okay. Oh wow, we met. <sighs> so romantic. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. my channel so in today's video um, well first I want to actually just say thank you because the welcome was warm and inviting and exciting and I already knew that y'all were gonna come through but it's just so refreshing to just be back on social media and I don't want to make it seem like a big deal but it kind of is a big deal because I've removed myself so far from social media, so coming back, it almost just feels nostalgic. And um, I, don't, I don't take the relationship that we've built with each other for granted. So thank you for your patience. Thank you for your warm welcoming. Warm welcome back. <laughs> thank you for your warm welcome back. Um, thank you for the support. And in this video, I wanna tell you guys a little bit about why you guys even see me on social media because if it wasn't for these two here <laughs> i would not be back so in today's video i hope to tell you guys a little bit more about myself more about my day to day and then inspire us lone wolves out there in the freelance world it can be very hard very discouraging and these two have very powerful stories and backgrounds and hopefully you guys can find some inspiration in just keeping on keeping on in the creative realm because there will be a place for you um and yeah so let's just get right into the video So, okay, so you guys already know, well, maybe you guys don't know, but I started my YouTube channel in 2015. I filmed myself, edited myself, was managing my collaborations and sponsorships myself, and pretty much doing everything. Photo shoots, editing photos, doing my website. I literally did everything, and I used to pride myself on independence, and being a mom, that was my biggest lesson in my individual self. It's like, you cannot do it by yourself. You can't raise your kids by yourself. You can't have a business by yourself. So it brought me here. So, um, um, I'm Tamara and I'm running executive assistant. Yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> she is acting. <laughs> but no, because I'm like, I'm sure you're gonna ask me. Yeah. I'm not gonna give all the details right away. Yeah. Okay. But that's the gist of who I am. Okay, so do it again. Okay. Hi guys, I'm Tamara and I'm Marlene's executive assistant. Okay. <laughs> okay, so you do have like three roles right now. Um. Hello everyone, I'm Casey. I am. Good. What am I? Head of content. Action. Hello everyone, I'm Casey. <laughs> Stop! Hello everyone, my name is Casey and I am head of content. <laughs> How do you say it? <laughs> but it's not you, it's you shaking your leg. Like I can feel, I, am. I can feel, I'm trying not to laugh. I'm trying to act normal. Casey, I'm going to pull from you. Yes! <laughs> All right, here we go. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I'm going to get right, okay. my teacher in class. I just want to um, <clears throat> bring it back again. So I honestly didn't take this leap of faith into hiring a day to day team until my manager and basically business mentor, Denora from Bodega 7, um, Denora told me I needed a team. And I was just like, well, I, what do I need a team for? Like I can do everything myself. And she's like, you can't do everything by yourself. At the time, I think Kai Kai was like, maybe like 10 months. 10 months postpartum and she was just like, you need a team. Mind you, I had editors, I had like people here and there that would help me, but it honestly became me doing the work times two or times three because I hired somebody to do it and then I would have to redo it anyways. So I really had a problem with having somebody match my energy. So it just 
drained me because trying to find somebody, then you invite them into your personal life and kind of your goals and your dreams and what you want to do, and then they're not delivering, and then you end up doing it anyways. But she sat, sat me down on the phone and was like, you need somebody. So I took her lead and I was like, okay, fine. I'll probably just need somebody maybe like three times a week for four hour days. And I'm laughing because our first day was eight hours. And I was like, yeah, onboarding might take some time, but we never, we've never had a four hour day ever, like ever, ever. But we couldn't find anybody. It was really, really hard to find somebody. And I want to say that anybody who is in, especially a big city, go on Indeed and look for personal assisting, look for content. There's so many people, even myself, I'm still looking for people to add to my team and there is nowhere to be found. I've looked on Instagram for like personal assistant under hashtags or like creative director or content editor and it's so hard to find somebody. So if you are a freelancer and you just don't know where to start or how to get your name out there, go on Indeed, go on social media and use the hashtags. So long, long, long story short, um, I went on Indeed, I put out a job posting for a personal assistant, she um, applied and I hired her. And pretty much the rest is history. There has not been a step that has been missed. We have not had a day that doesn't go by where we're not working at full capacity. The three days a week for four hour shifts has never been that. We work five days a week, we work six to eight hour days every single day last summer and now that I'm a mom of two it's just not doable for my family so we do work um, like three days a week in person and then the rest she kind of does on her own because we've integrated so well where she kind of knows me before I think what I'm thinking so it's great and I'm so happy to have Tiamra because genuinely <laughs> genuinely like my life and my dreams would not come to fruition without her 100%. And I we have I had our <laughs> No, I'm so serious because there's so much that I have and I want to do and it doesn't seem hard. I think our goals they don't seem hard, yeah. but when you actually get into them you're like, "Oh damn, I got to do this. I got to do this. I got to do this." And it's like I used to laugh at people who had like personal assistants and stylists and this and that. And like when I became a mom, I'm like, "Oh, this makes sense why people have people around." And I honestly felt like I was contradicting in myself because here I am somebody who wants to empower and uplift women and I had the financial stability to hire people out yet I wasn't allowing a Tamara or a Casey to be empowered through me financing their dream because I was kind of like no I do everything myself I'm independent I, I got this I got this and Clearly, you guys, as my audience, see that I didn't really get that far. So when you do elevate in your life in a certain capacity, it's 100% necessary to vet out help because not only are you investing into your business, but you're investing into their dream and their goal. And me and Tamara come to work every single day and we have fun. We be having a ball. We have <laughs> yeah. a ball. So that's kind of the backstory on me and when I had to look at myself and say hey I'm kind of being contradicting I'm not really practicing what I preach and by me investing into Tamara Tamara invests into me which ultimately invests in kind of what we're creating together two, two seconds yeah hi naked baby look at that baby come here you got brown out there so my name is Tamara I am from Cleveland, Ohio. Um, I moved out to LA in yeah 2015, so it's, it's about eight years now. Um, I moved out here originally for modeling, and then I fell into acting, and that has kind of been like my primary goal. So when I was looking for a job, I was like, what kind of job do I want to do that's going to bring me some joy that I don't feel like I'm like I have to do the nine to five? Because that was why I quit my last job. I was like, I'm not coming out here to be working nine to five and being bored every day. So my I made a list, like a full list. I was like, I wanna make this much, I wanna no, that's Yeah, right. like, I made like a full list. I'm like, I wanna make this much. I wanna be able to have like freedom to like if I do book something my employer won't be like, no, you can't go film. Like I wanna have like a place where I just feel like it's a community. I was like the next place wherever I work, I was like I wanted it to feel like a family, like I'm in a family environment, which is crazy. 
Um, I was like, I was just saying, <laughs> yes, no, seriously. I was saying all this stuff. I'm like, I don't want to feel like I'm settling. I'm like, I want to be enough to, to make enough to provide for myself, especially like in LA. I'm just like, I just don't want to settle. So I made this whole list. So every time I applied, if somebody was like, oh, you can have this, but you can't have this, I'd be like, oh, well, they me. Like, I would just cross over the list. I'm like, I'm not, I'm like, I can easily go back to a job where I know I won't be happy. So I'm like, if I'm going to do it, if I'm really going to leave my job and do this, then I want to do something that makes me feel happy. So, that's right. where on Indeed found you, and then so I remember telling you like in the interview too, like yeah, I could you ask? I think what did you was like, okay, are you acting? I was like, yeah, and you, I was like, yeah, I just want to find a job that you know it is my goal, but I still want to do something in the meantime that I enjoy. Like that was really important to me. Like I want to be fulfilled just in general in every aspect of my life. So after the interview, I was talking to my sister. I'm like, okay, this is nice. I'm like, I feel good about this, but also I was like, let me just breathe for a second because you know you never know. Um, and then I think uh, like a week or two later, I remember I was like, I'm interested, but she didn't know that we were moving. Yeah, I didn't, so I didn't really like communicate thoroughly with her because we were moving and a moving in a semi pandemic with a baby and moving states, knowing you had to move but not having a place to land, I was all over the place. Yeah. So I know my communication was really like up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. And I was just like, oh, I like her, but like, I don't know if I can financially commit. Like that's a lot of money to be investing in somebody when I don't really feel like I need that much help. Yeah. She's like, you need that much help. And I'm like, oh, I don't really know. Like, is it going to be valuable? And like, for me and my background, we penny pinch. Like, we like, oh, we don't like, why pay somebody? Oh, I can do it. Oh, I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. And I would feel like the biggest setback for me as a business owner has been coming from a background of I can do it. 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 Because I guarantee if I had Tamara before being a mom, I would have been like, I would have been here, like me here, I would have been here. And then if I had Tamara and Casey, I would have been here. <laughs> so yeah, that was my biggest downfall. Yeah. Well, I'm from Virginia um, initially, Dumfries, Woodbridge area, but being in the military, I'm kind of been- Oh, that's okay. okay. <laughs> that's close. That's close. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Um, but I've been all over Virginia, so I'm, Virginia is just right, sorry, right here in my heart. But I've lived there since I was about four years old, no, five. So from about five to 30, I've been in Virginia and I felt like the walls were caving in on me. So I needed to leave. So I decided to move to LA with my boyfriend. And I was, I had a career beforehand. I was a school counselor and it was nice. I always wanted to help the youth, but there's politics in education and I'm, I'm not gonna go through that, but it just wasn't my place. And also I moved out here like 2019, which is right before the pandemic and we got shut down. So I was working from home and I was doing a lot of soul searching and like just learning new things about myself. And I realized that I wanted something different completely with my career and it was time for me to just kind of spread my wings, but I wasn't ready for it. But God said, you want to be ready for it now because I got fired. Um, I didn't want to get the B word and they were requiring for all the staff to get the B word. So I decided knowing about holistic healing and just believing that my body could heal itself through like, you know, lifestyle changes and the food you eat. I decided against it and of course they gave me the boot. They, gave, they told me that I couldn't work there anymore. So even though I had the idea that it was time for me to leave, I just, I was telling myself I was gonna wait till the end of the school year, but it happened in the middle of the school year. So it happened in October. So maybe a month into the new school year. So you were thinking like, you good for at least like- And you know, I was gonna stack up. up. Yeah. But the good thing is that I stacked up a lot of money during the pandemic because a lot of things were shut off. I didn't have to pay student loans, thank God. So I just saved it. And I thought I was saving the money for having a, a kid or something like that. Like just having a safety plan. So I saved up a lot of money, not knowing I was saving it for, I was saving it for not having a job, basically. So from that point until about six, six months of not having a job, I was, I went in with the intention of saying my next job I'm gonna enjoy, I'm gonna um, 
It's gonna be a creative uh, outlet. It's gonna be, I just put, basically made a list of like what I wanted for myself and I started meditating and visualizing what that would be. So within those six months of like figuring it out, and even before then I was part-time um, like freelance DJing on the side and um, in DJing you kind of have to learn social media being like your advertisement so I will post mixes on SoundCloud and then with the DJing you learn that you have to kind of be creative in all forms because you want to advertise like your mixes or if you're DJing somewhere you kind of have to come up with your own advertisement so I started uh, looking into video editing and YouTube and how to edit anything and I started making videos to advertise that and it started to get a, a good amount of traction. People liked what I was creating. So fast forward, I started making TikTok. Um, I had a TikTok page and I would edit like evolution of my favorite artists and then um, that got a, like thousands of views and I was like, oh, well maybe this could be a thing. I don't, I, let's try it out. So literally, the day I decided to apply to be a video editor, the first post, I get on Indeed.com, and the first post I saw was part-time video editor for the Fine Guru. And I was, I used to watch all her videos back then. So I was like, is this the Fine Guru or is it somebody else? So I clicked on it. It was the first post? The first one, the first everything. And I was like, well, let's see, let's see what happens. So after I was going through my photos in my photo album and I had a picture of my last day at work as a school counselor and literally three days later I screenshot a post of hers and it was about I think it was like spirit baby she was showing like an audio audible and I only saved it because I was like well if I, if I ever have kids then I will you know read that not knowing that God was like no you're gonna work with her like <laughs> right so then yeah I, I applied and then interviewed and it went really well no the interview we was both crying we were crying yes it was a lot of crying. <laughs> yes it was very because it she poured into me and i really needed it in that moment so it meant a lot so yeah it went here we are the interview was amazing and here we are now Look it's at just the best this is the best job ever. it was it was an emotional interview because I think as creatives and as freelancers, we can almost get tired of our own self because we're creating only for ourselves because no one's really seeing it. <clears throat> and Casey, although she didn't have a video editing portfolio, her Instagram looked great, her TikTok was great, and the few pieces of content that she had were edited at a very, very high level. So I knew just as somebody who's seeking out help, okay, maybe she doesn't have the um, experience, but what she is editing is great. So the way I thought about it is I have a lot of raw unedited content. So she's able to do this for herself. What she can she do for me? And I think in that interview when she was just kind of like, I think Casey needs to celebrate herself more regardless. And we're gonna work on that. So it's 10.05, oh my gosh, she's about to be here in one minute. Okay, 10.05. Casey's about to pull up. She's about to text us to come outside. We have the beautiful bride. <laughs> but in the interview, it was like, okay, let's take a let's take a pause. You may not have this, 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 and this, and this. But look at what you've done with how little you've had. And if I have all the raw content, but you have the creativity, we can do something great together. So it was really emotional. I think it's always kind of like, I, I have these connections often where you want to stay professional. So you don't want to be like, oh my God, I watch you. And then it kind of can feel weird. But I think there's always like an organic way that you can kind of say like, hey, I saw you on social media and you know, I appreciate what you do. And that's kind of what it was where we can both appreciate each other. Um, because you do want to be professional. There's you know, other occurrences that have not been very professional or can also feel, and I say this respectfully, but like you're more enamored with the social presence of who I am rather than what can you bring to the table as yourself and what can I bring to the table as myself and what can we create collectively together. Um, where ultimately some people just want to be part of the lifestyle and I think social media does a good job of creating a highlight on the beautiful things but it's like I'm a mom 
I got kids and my kids be hanging on both of them. If we were supposed to record this video hours ago, you can see I'm feeding my son, so like, it's not glamorous. I am blessed and grateful for the life I have, but they were just very raw and authentic and we worked well together. So here we are a year later um, and we're creating beautiful things. So I feel like anytime for me personally, when I feel like there's another level I wanna reach or something that I wanna obtain that I'm not, or I don't currently feel like I'm at right now, I always make a list. So I write down what it is, everything I want, how I wanna feel when I obtain these things, what I want it to feel like and just like just I really literally close my eyes and be like how do I want to feel and whatever that is I'm like that's when I'll know like that's what it is so when I made the list I was just like okay I'm gonna pray about it and whatever happens if it's supposed to be that's what it's supposed to be and despite everything else like during that whole time when I was looking for this job I was I'm like I don't know how I made it through these I was telling Casey this in the car once I'm like honestly if you was looking at my life before I started working here, like I don't know how God got me through all this, but I'm just thankful because I was stressed out. And I was just like, okay. So finally when this position came along, even the first day, I was, we say this all the time, I was dressed up. Like, I was like, she was dressed to impress. I was like, oh, this is a job. I wish you took a picture or something. I, I, I had a laser old computer. She looked she looked like an assistant ready to get stuff. I was like, it's time to do some work. When you feel like, when you feel like life isn't happening in your favor. For me, because I think it's very hard to get impatient, especially how we say like when we're free, we're freelancers. So like you never really know when the next thing is happening. So when I, before we started working together, what I did was I was just like, if I don't know, what can I control basically? Like what can mm -hmm. I control at this moment? And I was like, you know what? I haven't visited a family in a while. So I went back to Cleveland for like two months and I was just at home. I was still applying to jobs and I went home. And I was like, I'm gonna enjoy being around with people I love and doing that. So I was like, okay, cool. Then them two months went past. Then I came back, I was like, okay, well, let me start working out in the morning. So I would work out in the morning. I had like a full routine of just things that I could control because I knew if not, I'm gonna be losing my mind trying to do everything else. So I was like, let me make sure I'm waking up early, eating what the right things, feeding my body, breathing, working out. And then whatever I could, I would just go outside. Just do things that I knew that like, it would just make me happy and not work about everything else. Cause the rest of my life, I was like, I don't know how I'm gonna do this, 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 and this. I was like, I can't be sitting here trying to stress out about that. And sure enough, every time when I felt like, hey, I don't know how I'm gonna do this. When I tell you all, I was getting blessed, blessed, right? I promise you, I do not. I just like, thank you God. Cause I was like, I don't know. I don't know how I got through these couple months, but I just be thankful cause I'm like, you really just gotta trust it and just like let go. That's really what it is, you just have to yes. let go. Oh, and let's also take a quick um, moment. We did not color coordinate today. <laughs> um, even though I'm kind of covered, um, we all came in with like peachy, pink, purpley yeah. tones. <laughs> I guess it was all synced up. Aligned. Yes. How many months did you not have a job? From November till we started working. So November, December, January, February, March. Six months, seven months. In LA? That's nice. In LA. The other part of yourself where it's like, oh damn, you ain't got this, what you gonna do? That part is when it's like, ooh, that nigga scary, cause you'll be sitting there like, it'll break you down. Yeah, it'll break you down. And, and like, I'll have times where like, if I'm here, I'll notice like, if I'm in my room for too long, or if like, I just feel like I've been down for too long, I'll be like, oh, I've been sitting here for too long. Like, oh, I gotta get up. <laughs> how did you, how did you get that awareness though? Do you feel like it's always been in you? Or like, cause I think for me, when I went through my depression, I didn't know how to like say, hey, you've been out inside, you need to like go outside, you need to work out. How did you get that type of? I think experience, because I have been in times where I was like too down too long and then I've seen what happens. So now like when I catch myself in a space where I feel like I'm getting too sad or like I don't feel like being around people, I'm like, oh no, this is not you. Like this isn't me. Like let me get up and go out. And like, so I'll, one thing I have to have light in my house. So like I open up all the windows when I wake up. Like it's fresh air coming in, and that's one of the things I do. Like I don't notice, like, I, or if my room looks crazy, like I usually notice when things are not not aligned with who I am. Like, oh, my room is junky, the blinds not open, like I'm not eating good, like it's like oh something's wrong. So, did you ever have any doubt between like family, friends, close friends, like 
Pam, like, this isn't for you, maybe you should just do. Or were you, were you um, have a supportive family there? Who's around you as well, I feel like, is very important. Whenever I, because I'm so in a place where I'm secluded, that's why I want to talk about family, working in a place of environment is important because my family, since I'm living in LA, everybody's not here. So, like, I'm used to being around them every day. So, that's also something I do when I'm feeling like not myself. I'm like, let me call my sisters. Let me call, see my nieces and them, see, and it makes me instantly feel better. Mm -hmm. So, that's important. But um, as far as family being supportive, when I first came out here, I was so stubborn. I was just like, I'm about to go. Like, I don't know what to do. And I was 20 at the time. I'm like, I'm about to go. Like, I don't know what to tell I'm about to go. So I'm, I'm leaving, like I'm not staying here. So, a lot of my family was like, huh? <laughs> like, what do you mean? Like, you just about to leave? I'm like, yeah, like I'm moving to LA. So I feel like over the years, they've come more accustomed to kind of the life I live. But even there's still times like, my parents are, they'll say like, you know, there's this good job, or like there's, you know, there's a, you know, you go to school, I'm just like, ah, it's not for me. Mm -hmm. But no, it's just, just like, let it go, it's not for me. Like, or they'll ask, like, how stuff come? I'm like, it's coming. And now I've gotten to the point where I'm like, everything will happen in its own time. And so I'm not, back when I was 20, I used to be more worried. But now that I'm like 28, I'm like, I just trust whatever plan God is having for my life. Where I'm just like, it'll happen at the right time. And in the meantime, I'm just going to enjoy what he has in front of me right now. So, okay. I love that for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. <laughs> So I feel like sometimes the baby of the family can be like super irresponsible and like just I'm gonna get what I want but then I feel like it worked in your favor where it's like I don't expect nothing less yeah. so this is what I want this is what I deserve and I'm going to I'm, I'm gonna get it I think sometimes even for me it's kind of like whatever is convenient sometimes or oh no I'm gonna just put this on pause like you were saying you were adamant in, in your stance so I think that's super admirable and mature very mature because mm -hmm. 20 i don't know if i could have left listen me coming out here at 20 i would not be the same person well at all. let's talk about you and your seven months of just not really knowing what was next i low-key was excited i'm not even gonna lie to you because when i made the decision to be a school counselor it was like and what age were you counseling as a school counselor you have to get a, your master's so I got that at about 22, 23. Oh, no. I meant the kids. The kids. So, <laughs> the kids. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the age group? Yeah, like what were you? Oh, I was a middle school counselor. So, very tough, but they were so sweet. It was very exhausting and it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. So I was doing that for almost seven years and I was just like, there has to be something else. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was like, there has to be something else. Like, this, this, this is not working for me. So when I ended up getting fired, I was kind of like, this is my opportunity, I'm free. Like I'm, I can figure it out. But the reality of it was like, maybe the first four months was cool. I saved up enough, and I'm gonna be real with y'all, I saved up enough money that when I budgeted, once I didn't have a job, I budgeted to where I was gonna be able to survive a full year in LA. If I budgeted everything and stayed the course. And that's like tight budget. But I didn't do that. So about six months in, I was like, I need like either a part-time, just a supplement until I get like my full-time, like real career that I'm really excited about. Once it got really tight, it was really difficult to be optimistic sometimes. But a thing about me is that I don't realize I'm in a tough time until afterwards when I've gotten out of it. So I'll say stuff to my parents or I'll say stuff to like friends and, and their reaction will kind of be like, okay, maybe that is a, something I should be concerned about. But my family and my friends are really supportive. It's just sometimes when you say something out loud and then they respond, you're like, oh, well, maybe it is a little more serious than I thought. The thing that got me through was sunlight. Honestly, I would hike. Every day I would almost hike, almost every day. So if I felt like 
I was getting sad or I needed to get out of my apartment, I would just go hiking. I would just let the sun kind of beam on my face. And that kind of cleared my mind and, and helped me narrow in on what I truly want. So that was the only thing that really, not the only thing, but that was the main thing that kind of kept me going is realizing I was in LA and the weather is beautiful. Like take advantage of what you have right now and then let everything else, it's very similar to what you're saying. Like the things that you can't control, you gotta let it go. There's no, like you cannot hold on to it because it's literally out of your control. So why not focus on the things you can control? I would hike, I would try to move my body, I would try to eat the healthiest food, but you know, when your money is kind of low, it's, you can't really eat as healthy, healthy as you want to. Did it bring a point to you? You know say resources, like I yes. feel like there's so much that's available to people, mm -hmm. like especially when, if you're like, I don't have a job, like I need to do that. Do your research on wherever like you are, like people are out here that are willing to help people. Mm -hmm. And like, I'm just like, dang, when I was like not working, I was like, how am I gonna do this? Like, there's people who will literally like pay your rent for a month, like programs that you can apply to. So there's like, well, I didn't know that. yeah, there's a bunch of resources where you can like find stuff. Just Google. Google is your friend. Like, where are these resources? Yeah. Literally, go on Google and type in pay rent for a month. Just type some in um, you Germany, have to, you have to link Alabama. That. Literally, like, and there's like organizations that like, and nonprofit organizations that like help people. I can do all those things. So I would just say like look into resources. And it goes into like Marlene's mentality as a businesswoman. For me, I was like, I don't need help. Like I'm gonna figure it out on my own. I got this, don't worry. I mean, it works, but it it, it stressed you out more. So uh, having resources, I just didn't do that at all. I was gonna ask you, do you feel like, I feel like when you're in it, you're in it. But like looking back on it now, do you feel like, dang, I was really going through it. Or do you feel like- Yeah, we passing by certain areas and I'm like, oh, I remember, oh, this is the hiking. Literally on the way here, I passed the hiking trail that I used to walk every day when I was at my lowest. And I was like, God, God is amazing. But yeah, I like the those little landmarks of places you would go when you're struggling is now it reminds me of like, dang, I was really going through it and I had no idea. like. But it's funny how like cause even now I'll be like I'll, I'll like when I was going through everything I record videos so like I'll just record myself all the time talking like whatever I'm going through Aww. so like looking back on it now I'm like dang like I was really out here like dang I don't know how to do that I do but it's like now you like I'm smiling about it but like it's funny because it's like you were really going through it back then so it's just it's crazy how like this little circle comes. Did you guys ever, well first of all, now that we're here, did you guys ever imagine that this was your guys' like next stopping point in your life? Like did you ever, when I, when we, <laughs> so me and Tamara have worked actually longer than Casey and I. Oh my God. It's crazy that it's really been one year. Yeah. So let me say this too. Tamara was full time from the jump, pretty much. Casey was hired last year, but there had been so much going on in my personal life. Casey didn't really work that much the first year because we had so many plans and, and ideas that have fallen through. Part on my schedule and me moving and having a child and not being able to make good on the things that I said I wanted to do. The other part had been hiring people who didn't come through on their promises, which then would have given Casey things to do that didn't necessarily work out. So Casey has only really been full time, like three months? It hasn't been, I thought it was like maybe two. Maybe two months, but we yeah, were still like working. Out yeah, so two months full time, but like part time a year-ish. Mm -hmm. I would say freelance for a year full-time too much. It, it's, it's like an exciting thing. Like, we really never know what we're gonna get. Every day of different, literally. Like, we really don't know. Like, we have structure. Like, usually it's like, okay, let me come in. Let me look at the emails, see who we have to follow up with, see what we have to do with, I don't know, the contractors for the different properties. Let me check on, like, patterns and follow up with the manufacturer for the clothing line. Let me make sure everybody... Oh, so she's still in the team. Yeah, like, there's stuff going on. So She really is. Let's, like, <laughs> let's check on, like, the... Make sure Casey has everything she needs to do content. Make sure he has... Piero has everything he needs to do content. Um, but then you have a few surprises along the way where it's, like... 
you know, we the SCs are coming up tomorrow. We're about to go. We're about to move across the world. So we got to pack We moved eight times. Um, eight times. Eight houses. Three states. And what period One year. Time? One year. Two kids. Three kids. So there's always something to do. I would definitely say that. It's, it's fun though, because it's like, you really never know. Like, we'll be planning a photo shoot, and then it's like, oh, we're... I don't know what we're doing. We're gonna do two more photo shoots yeah. instead of one. Yeah. So yeah. So we're, we're still learning. We're still trying to figure it out. Yeah. But it's fun because it's like not only are we learning so much, and I think you've also done a good job of just like opening our eyes to other things. Mm -hmm. Where it's like even without saying too much, but like with properties and stuff of like how important that is, and like passing it down to your children, and like you're also teaching us things that we can eventually do for our kids one day. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a great thing as well. That's so it's true. like, it's always good things that we're learning here of just like, and it's a fun environment. Yeah, like, it's not exhausting Yeah, you know, like, it's just... The day flies by. We'll be like, it's almost, <laughs> what, four o'clock? We've probably been here for like six hours and it feels like- It felt like it too. Like, yeah. Like it doesn't, this doesn't feel like work. Yeah. So it's so, uh, it's great. It is. It is. I feel like I was getting emotional, so I'm glad we stopped. Oh, oh no! Um, but what does a day of work look like for you? It's the same. Um, <clears throat> it is chaotic, but in a good way. I think I've always wanted a job where every day you didn't know what to expect. I just don't like redundancy. I don't like things that are just the same every day. So this is like perfect. They brought me on part time. And when you come from a corporate lifestyle, you expect Structure eat, 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 eat. and I was like she'll send me the footage. I'll send it back I don't get responses for like a day or two and I'm like, oh, maybe they don't like it But then Tamara will always respond and be like, hey, she'll let me know like there's stuff going on But I never know the gravity of how much stuff goes on. So I'm only thinking of it from a, a blind moment where I just get things randomly and I just have to, it's like you're on call. I didn't realize how chaotic <laughs> it was until I started working full time and I was like, oh, it makes sense now. Every day, like literally, every day there's something random that pops up and we'll have to pivot so fast. Mm -hmm. It's like, we'll come with a set plan, but it, it never goes to plan. In the last three months, how many houses have we been in? Three months. Three or four? Three months? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I think that in itself is kind of hard to navigate yeah. when we're having business and we're having things to do. If you guys had to speak to yourself in the camera, your younger self, your one year ago self, or to somebody who feels like they're struggling and they're on their last leg before they go back and take a back seat to their dreams and their wishes and their goals and they're on ground zero, maybe there's nowhere to stay, maybe there's no funds left, maybe there's family or friends who are as supportive as your guys is, what would you say? I would say to make up your mind. Um, that was the biggest thing. Make up your mind on what you want for your life. If you're iffy on it, then you're, it, will all, it won't work out. You have to be very, um, I guess the word would be conviction. You have to be like very low-key delusional. You have to be delusional. Um, and it's okay to feel crazy because that's part of the journey. It's you basically believing what you believe and not letting the outside sources, even if it comes from love, if it doesn't feel like it's, it's um, natural to you, then it doesn't matter. So I guess it's just make up your mind on what you want for yourself and really go after it fully. Like, even if you feel delusional, even if you feel crazy, even if you don't have any funds, and I guess the one thing I learned is, is use your resources and, and ask for help if you need it. I think that's the biggest thing. I feel like I would tell myself or whoever out there that would need this is just to feed off what Casey said as well as to really believe in yourself and just know who you are and what you're capable of and put in, as long as you're doing what you have to do, if you're waking up putting in the work that you need to be putting in to get to whatever level you're trying to get to, as long as you feel confident in that, then don't listen to nobody else. Only you and yourself knows the type of visions that you have. Only you really are the one that's talking to God and you have the place in your heart what you're able to do and only you can see that vision. So nobody else is going to be able to tell you what's possible and what's not possible. 
So I would say hold on to that as well as just let go. Like you just gotta let go and trust that whatever journey you on at the end of the day, whatever happens, it's gonna happen regardless. That's number one. And number two, whatever happens, it's supposed to happen. So just let go, relax, even though you probably be stressed. You just gotta literally you gotta sit back even if it's for a day, just sit back and be like, okay, I'm where I'm supposed to be and this is what's supposed to be happening. I just have to let go and let it happen. And I want to also say something too, is I feel like as a listener, and I just want to reiterate this for people who are on the other side, is you guys both aligned yourself with the caliber of what you wanted to attract. Y'all didn't sit and soak, you guys didn't blame nobody, you guys didn't sit in your sadness or your confusion and you made sure that your body was right, your mind was right, your were biologically getting what you needed to upgrade yourselves before your physical could be upgraded. You were in the sun, you guys were stretching, working out, eating a certain way, doing the best that you can. So if you feel like there's nowhere to go, I would say take that first step with yourself. Mm -hmm. So you can't attract what you do not possess. Mm -hmm. So if you do feel like you're in the dark, if you feel like you're at rock bottom, take that first step, stretch, drink water, affirm to yourself that what you want is waiting for you on the other side and align yourself with that purpose. Even if you don't feel the greatest, that walk that you don't want to do or you sitting and you got your scarf on your head still or you in the bed, like get out and get up so that you can move forward. Also, I was going to say, because you just said that, also sometimes remind yourself if you're, I think what, what was important for me is just like, if I'm sad right now, let me just be sad. Yes. And then here, and then that way I can get over it and get back to what I gotta get back oh to. Oh my gosh, yes. Like that's that is big. Yeah, that is so like, big. let yourself be like, okay, I understand today is just not the day. Let me allow this to happen because if not, I'm gonna take this energy with me for the next mm -hmm. couple days. So like, let me do this and then get over it. Cause at the end of the day, it's like, no one is asking me to reach this other, next level but myself. So it's like, I have to be aware that I'm asking this of myself. So let me take this time and then get back to what I gotta get back to. Saying your feelings, feel you. Feel you, feelings. Thank you, Marlene. I would say thank you. Thank you for bringing us for being the catalyst. Yes, no, I really, both of you guys, I appreciate it so much. It's like, even this last week, as we've done things and we've had our hiccups, like, I think I just know that what we're creating is gonna be bigger than even this. Um, I do wanna say social media isn't like the comeback. We're coming back with things that are bigger than just us, that are bigger than just my family, your family, and your family. Like we're gonna be creating things that are just really next level. Yes. Next level. Next level. And we want to document it. Um, you guys both hold me accountable, and I appreciate that. My life is um, spontaneous. I'll say spontaneous. And sometimes that's not always the easiest to work with, so I really appreciate you guys for being so fluid and flexible. I, I just wanna say thank you, not only to you guys, but just for trusting the process because this is only the beginning. And the next time you guys see us on a couch, we'll be talking about things that we've worked on for months, things that we've failed at, walls that we've hit and we've climbed around walls that are still sitting broken while we're focusing our time and energy elsewhere, realizing that we can't necessarily do everything. Um, but we're really looking and building, looking to build a team. And um, my life is still growing and changing and evolving. And there's definitely a need for more people eventually on this team. Um, I want to say, as somebody who could not find them and was desperately looking for them, um, go on Indeed, use your hashtags, create that page, create that business page, create things where people like me want to find them. Like if you are a content editor, hashtag content editor on your stuff. Go on Indeed, look for people who are looking for you, um, message creators and tell them about your services. If you're a web designer, Tell people that if you create things contact people people are always looking for people to work at a high level and we're desperately looking to pay people 
when things are brought to the table in a high level. So um, thank you guys both for allowing my dreams to come true and also creating a wonderful work environment for me, my family, and my kids because this is a very intimate workspace and I appreciate the patience that it takes to work in my home because sometimes things just don't go the way that they're supposed to and thank you for sharing some of yourselves with my audience because I know they are going to appreciate this as well. So thank you guys for watching, thank you guys for tuning in, you guys have met pretty much the day-to-day -day core in-house team um, and you guys will be seeing more of us soon. So thank you so much and we will see you on the next upload. Peace. <laughs> <laughs>